So yeah, this session is uh, Docker in a Flash. This is an introduction to Docker. Uh, so we're going to go over some some basics getting into Docker, uh, some basic terminology. Uh, we want to hopefully send you on your way knowing how to use Docker in some way or another when you leave here. Uh, maybe if you have some questions about some, some terms and things that uh, you may have read with Docker that may be kind of confusing because there are a lot of different terms out there and knowing uh, which version of Docker to use, which one's best for me, which one's best for my environment, uh, that's what we're hoping to cover here. So uh, to get started, my name is Will Jackson. I am from Aiken, South Carolina. Uh, I've been working with Drupal for uh, about eight years, and uh, before that I worked in web development, uh, other CMSs, U107, WordPress, um, you know, a bunch of, bunch of old ones that are, some still around, some no longer are. Uh, I worked for a company called Canby Studios. Uh, we we're based out of San Francisco, California. Uh, we're a fully distributed shop. Uh, where our primary focus is Drupal. We do do some WordPress work, a little bit of Rails. Uh, we're a full service web agency. So we build um, really awesome websites. We have a great uh, support program. Uh, that's for myself, I, I work in support, so that's, uh, uh, you can probably see some of that from my uh, presentation and some of the points that I want to say are important here. Um, yeah, so we, uh, so I guess getting into it, uh, what is Docker? Uh, Docker is, um, it's a feature-rich program. So, uh, it is virtualization in a sense, so I mean, similar to uh, virtual machines, and um, it's, a, it's a container based thing. So, you have LXC, Linux containers, and Docker. Uh, it's written in Go. It is, um, it is basically a, a framework for working with uh, containers. So, Docker makes it really easy to uh, build um, repeatable automated development environments, uh, whether it be local, you can do production, this talk's gonna be mostly about uh, local development using Docker. Uh, there's a lot of things you can do with that. Um, it is cross-platform, so it works, uh, natively it works with Linux. Uh, you can use this with Windows and Mac. Uh, there are different versions of that for, for both of these. Um, uh, one of the big, the nicest things I think about Docker is that uh, its ability to sandbox it as well. So it quarantines a lot of the uh, work that you're doing with, with a particular project. It could be uh, you know, a demo app, or it could be a full-on project. You, know, we can, you can do a lot with Docker, and it's not just specific to Drupal, uh, although we're going to be talking mostly about Drupal today. Um, another thing about it is that it uh, uses a shared kernel, so we'll see, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, I have a diagram that I think everybody has probably seen if they look, looked into Docker a little bit. Um, so it shares some of the resources across all of the containers and environments that you have on your system, uh, which is one of the one of the one of the differences with uh, between that and virtual machine or virtual machine routes. Um, and it's really good for resource management. Uh, so you're able to uh, very precisely set uh, amount of resources for a particular container. Um, other things too, like uh, hard like disk space. You know, disk space, it works off the host system, so you, know, you don't have to worry about provisioning uh, certain drives or things like that, specifically for Docker, who's use your, your, your base drive, your base mount, and kind of go from there. Uh, there's also a message here about low switch cost, uh, meaning that if you're switching between projects, uh, Docker is really good for that. Uh, so again, coming from the support world, um, it's really nice to be able to switch between uh, one project and another one without having to um, you know, worry about spinning up new environment. If you're using something like Vagrant or uh, VirtualBox or something like that, you would have to spin up one environment, spin down the other one, and so there's no conflicts. With Docker, um, you can run into conflicts, but there's a lot of work that's been done to mitigate that. And actually, Doxel, which we're getting into towards the end of the presentation, uh, does a whole lot of new magic just to make that uh, process go away for you, uh, which is really neat. Yeah, so uh, Docker also comes with a community, similar to the Drupal community. Uh, there's Docker Hub, which is what we're looking at here, where the screenshot is here. Um, similar to Drupal.org, if you're familiar with Drupal, which I imagine you are. Uh, here we can create uh, repositories, we can share our images. Um, they have public and private hosting, so kind of think of it like GitHub for Docker images. An uh, image, uh, we'll get into that in a little bit, but um, images could be for you know, like a Debian image or a Ubuntu image, something that uh, is publicly available, or if you wanted to create an image specifically for a project or something that you don't want to put out to the world, they do have options for uh, private hosting too. It costs a little bit of money, but it's not a lot, and it's, it's really useful. Um, so yeah, you can create repositories. Uh, a lot of the images that we find on here, specifically the, the Drupal image, uh, is 
better for demonstration. You can, I guess, develop with it, but it's more for you just want to show somebody Drupal and show how that works. So um, I've seen a few people that have gone there and tried to, um, you know, expect it to have a lot of tools and things that you're, you're used to having, but doesn't have that. So um, automated build repositories is a newer thing too, which is really neat. Um, it can connect with GitHub, and as you, as you uh, push changes to your image, it just automatically builds that somewhere else. It's really, really cool stuff. So that's hub.docker.com. Did I skip that? Yeah, I did. Okay. So I want to talk a little bit more about the historical development environments. Uh, so just how things were done in the past, but we can kind of compare this to Docker a little bit. So we've got uh, bare metal, which is, which is your WAMP, your XAMP, your uh, LAMP stacks. You know, if you're installing Apache yourself on a machine, and that's on a machine, that's what we're putting under the bare, bare metal setup. Uh, some of the pros uh, to this setup is it's very easy to set up. I mean, you can go uh, to countless websites and find documentation on how to set that up. It's uh, it's been around for a long time, and there's just a lot of tools. It's, it is easy to use. So if you're using uh, like MAMP or Aquid Desktop or something like that, you know, that's going to be this bare metal approach. And uh, uh, again, it's, it is well documented. It's cross-platform for the most part. I mean, if you're using Mac or, or Windows, then you're going to have to you know, install uh, some other tools to do that uh, to support it. Uh, it's, but some of the cons of this is that it's going to take uh, more time to get set up on projects. You're going to have to go in and create that for each particular project in most cases, unless you have it scripted. Um, there's also a lot of, lot of sandboxing. So things that seem to happen on the system kind of stay on the system. I mean, I'm sure everybody has worked on a project and then you find a database three years down the road, you don't even know where it came from, but it's sucking up like five gigs on your system and you could have used those five gigs for something for a long time. Uh, so Docker does a really good job of kind of keeping those assets uh, falling into one place. So you can uh, manage those assets and when you remove the container, you know, it kind of goes with that too. Really nice. Um, uh, probably the biggest con about this though is just that it's not easily shareable. I mean, sure, you can write a script and provide it to somebody, but I mean, difference in hardware differences and, and Linux preferences, you know, your scripts might not always work. Uh, and you can always document things too, but not everybody goes and looks at the documentation or, you know, certain steps might be a little bit different for other people. And it just makes it to where it's, it's just difficult kind of passing on to another developer. Or, or if you're coming into a project for the first time, being able to very quickly get up to speed and start working on the project. Uh, over the years, we've had uh, some developments in virtual machines. So this is VirtualBox. Uh, Vagrant, Vagrant really is kind of like the inner, almost the in-between um, for you know, quickly setting up projects. So uh, some of the pros of this, you can have different environments. You can have different virtual boxes. Um, it, is, you know, it does work on Mac, Linux, Windows. Uh, it works well. You know, it's, very, it's very well documented. Um, and it is shareable, so you can share the, uh, the VirtualBox image or the Vagrant file. So I mean, it's, it's shareable. Um, some of the cons of this setup, though, is multiple projects. So if you're working between multiple projects, you're going to have to spin down one VM, turn up the other one, or turn on the other one, um, or if there's updates to the project, you know, you're making ups and go get coffee, go get lunch or something, come back and it's done. So, um, and again, it's resource demanding. So typically when you're setting up these VMs, you want to have to specify how much memory that you want to associate to this virtual machine. Uh, some cases, you know, how much disk space you want to associate to that, um, and then changing it after the fact Memory not so much, but, but this space can be a little bit pain. So um, it, it is a little bit tedious. And the shares. The uh, yeah. So then this is kind of getting into Docker now. Uh, this is going to be the differences between virtual environments and uh, containers. Uh, kind of a really high level. So your biggest difference is going to be um, right here. So you have your guest operating systems virt for virtual environments. You're going to have that over every single environment. You're going to have Ubuntu or Debian or whatever version of Linux you like on every single one of those virtual machines, uh, which is okay, but it's kind of not, not the best way to go about doing this because we're using the same operating system in a lot of cases. Uh, why can't we just share that all? And that's, that's, little, that's what Docker does. Um, so it's going to be a lot more efficient. It's going to be a lot faster. Um, and overall, it's just very similar in kind of how it works, but uh, overall, you're just going to just be more uh, resource friendly. Okay, so talking about uh, just basic terms with Docker, there's a lot of uh, different versions of Docker, places you can get Docker, uh, there's uh, different types of files with Docker. So, like, what does it all really mean? Um, 
First, starting with the Docker file. Uh, a Docker file is uh, just a basic text file that you go through and you can set up. Um, in, in this case here, we have, uh, you know, who is this from? So who is the author? In this case, I just made a really basic uh, Drupal 8 Docker file. Um, so in this case, it's, uh, you have you know, who is it from. In this case, that's uh, my username on Docker Hub, and then the uh, engine name, uh, then the maintainer, so my actual name, email address, uh, environment variables for uh, Apache. Uh, there's some extra stuff here. I have startup scripts. So in this case, I've got a, uh, a shell script that I'm copying uh, into the temp directory. Um, and it's going to access directories to dump other things into and copy that as well. And here's some like entry points. And that should just run my script. Uh, so in this script, more or less, it's just starting Apache and starting MySQL. Nothing, nothing too crazy. Uh, and then the work directory. So whenever I start the container, where is it going to? Um, that's just a really basic Docker file. It gets way, it can, there's a lot of uh, documentation out there for looking into that. But uh, for the base part, this is used for making a single image. So if you want to have a single image for a project, that's where your Docker file comes into play because you can specify that for that specific image. The uh, next term I want to talk about is just um, so those those are Docker images. This is going to be kind of how you how you would want to install this. Um, now this, these are just different options. So this, for example, is Docker for Mac. Docker for Mac is the if you were to go to Docker.com and look up how to install this on Mac, this is what you're going to see. This is going to be the the most prominent option. And uh, this option, it does require you to have uh, a Mac that is two, uh, 2010 or newer, um, and OS and El Capitan or newer. Reason for that is uh, HyperKit. Uh, it comes with that version of newer. Docker for Mac requires HyperKit to run, so that's, that's your requirements there. Uh, this comes with a few other, in, there are a few other uh, packages too, so you install Docker for Mac. It comes with Docker Engine, which is the basic uh, guts of Docker, and then you have the command line client. Uh, Docker Compose, which is awesome for creating multiple containers and linking them together, uh, and then Docker Machine. So, uh, really easy to install, use drag and drop, just like another Mac program. Uh, Windows is very similar, 64-bit uh, Windows 10 or newer, um, and it's really easy to install. You just kind of go open the book button, go through, click the next, 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 finish. And, uh, both give you some options for controlling those resources from the UI. Uh, you can control how many, how many process, how many CPUs are being allocated towards Docker, how much memory is there. Uh, both of these are similar. Um, have similar options. Uh, Docker Toolbox. So if you have a machine that doesn't quite meet those requirements, Docker Toolbox is great for older systems. Uh, it uses VirtualBox. So it's going to install VirtualBox. It's going to install that base version of Linux so that we can share that kernel across all of our images and containers. Uh, and that's it. So you have that one image rather than you know, a whole lot of images for your project. It's just one for Docker, and that's it. Uh, yeah, and same deal, you'll go through, just uh, very easy to install. Um, we can go through this. Similar programs as the older versions, for, for older computers, Docker toolbox. Uh, data volumes. Data volumes, that is where you're going to work. So if you mount, if you create a container, you start that container, you need to be able to access the files there. So this is going to be like where you do your git clone, where you pull the source code down to your machine. Uh, this is going to mount that on your local machine. This is going to give you the option to access those files that you're working with that's on the container. Um, so the, uh, these can be shared. Um, uh, one thing, whenever you delete the container, by default, uh, it's a security feature, um, it, but it does not remove the volume automatically. So it keeps it around, you have to specify that so um, you don't accidentally delete some, some data. Uh, it's also useful too for um, some little more advanced things like uh, if you, you can specify your mounts and where you're actually, uh, you know, where you're mounting that volume and you can mount several volumes. So one thing that you could do is like mount your uh, local SSH directory which will allow you to then have your shared public keys on the container too so that way if you're um, you're wanting to use like a git pull or something like that from within the, within the console of that image, you can do that with your normal keys without having to create new keys and have a um, few tricks there. Um, and again, with the volumes, uh, you can do, they're, they're both configurable from within uh, Mac and Windows, Docker for Mac and Windows. So, so I mentioned Docker Compose earlier. Uh, Docker Compose is a whole lot of fun. Uh, it allows you to run um, multi-container applications. So this would be like if you wanted to have, you have a Drupal site, 
You might have engine X as your web server, so you have an image specifically for engine X. You can then specify um, very specific versions of PHP, and it's just in one file. It's all done in one place. Uh, so we'll look at that now. And actually, this is a, the file I mentioned. It's a YAML file, uh, so it's very easy to open uh, and edit. Um, it links them together so that these these different images can interact with each other. And uh, and if you wanted to update them, I mean, similar to Vagrant, if you're used to that, just you know, Docker Compose, um, attack you for Damon. Um, so yeah. And this is an example. Can't read it very well, <laughs> but uh, this is uh, an example Docker file. This one came straight from Docker for Drupal. Uh, so if you've seen that, this is the, the configuration file for that. This is uh, very basic here. So we have in the top uh, MarioDB, that is our database that we're going to use here. Uh, we set up each one of these. So we have like this is going to be one image, one Docker image. This is going to be the second. So this is going to be the PHP version. This is going to be uh, our web server, and or I'm sorry, um, that's the database. Uh, web server down here, so engine X, and then uh, I think that's PHP my admin. We have an image specifically for that. Um, but the cool thing about this is that we can, if you, it's probably really hard to see, but like the PHP version here. Uh, so we have what we have actually in this file by default is PHP seven. Right? So if we want to change that, maybe go back to 5.6 because we don't like the future. We want to kind of go back a little bit. We can do that. Uh, we, all we have to do is just uncomment one file, comment out the other one. And uh, as we mentioned, just go back here and run Docker Compose up. Now you got a whole new version of PHP. And it's just you change one line in a file. <laughs> so it's been all one uh, Doing that through bare metal or some of those other historical um, environments would have been a lot more tedious to do that. Most of the time you probably just roll into an environment to begin with and just transfer it. So, um, so yeah, and then with this too, so like we have environment variables, so we have like uh, our database, we can actually have the database uh, name, user, the password, all that specified right in the Docker Compose file. Uh, with PHP, um, you can do things like uh, your ports. So if we have our, our port mapping here, uh, which is where we're specifying that on the 100 uh, with our actual web server. Uh, we're specifying to you know, <coughs> listen on 8100 for that to port 80. Uh, so you can do that configuration, all that configuration within the Docker Compose file. And, uh, and down here to the bottom, it's nail hog. So it's different images for that. So you have several images, uh, pretty much anything that you can go grab off Docker Hub, or if you want to create your own image, you have to start with a base image, create your own, upload it to Docker Hub, and then include it here too. So. So that brings me to Doxel. Doxel is, um, it abstracts a lot of that. So a lot of this, uh, different ports, different Docker files, different Docker Compose files, trying to keep all of that um, managed, Doxel does that for us. Doxel is a tool uh, originally created by uh, FFW. Uh, they're still maintaining that. Uh, a lot more people are on the project now. It's an open source project, it's on GitHub. Um, it's awesome. And hopefully after this, we'll, we'll all agree that's awesome. Uh, so it's a command line tool. Uh, it's made for defining and managing development environments. That's, that's the, if you go to the website, that's what they'll tell you. Um, it does use VirtualBox uh, to support Mac OS, or Mac OS X and Windows. Uh, although there is, you, you can use Docker for Windows, or I'm sorry, Docker for Mac uh, for this. It's more of an experimental release. Uh, if you have that installed already and you want to check this out, I would highly recommend uninstalling Docker for Mac and then going through their method of installing it because it would just make your life easier. Um, some of the issues is the performance issues with your, with your volumes and you have to start thinking about uh, alternative programs like Docker Sync to kind of get around some of those issues. So uh, just backing that out and using VirtualBox gets around those issues and makes it, it addresses a lot of the performance issues. So uh, just some group of thought there. The um, performance issues are with Doxel or they're? It's with Docs. So it's with HyperKit actually. So that's, the, that's where the problem lies. It's with HyperKit and mounting your volumes in HyperKit. There's just a lot of latency there. It's not specific to Doxel. Uh, it also exists with Drupal for, Doc, for Docker, uh, and even just a normal Docker image too. So I mean, even if you just went and did it from the ground up. Um, they released an update in the Edge release just this week um, that cut the bogs down drastically. Nice. Well, I didn't, wasn't aware of that, yeah, so that's. We, we just started testing it. Okay, so yeah, that, it was a really big issue. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it was every single talk I've ever been to or I've given, it's like the first question, like, it sounds really cool in theory, but man, the performance sucks on it. So it's like, uh, there's Docker Sync, it 
DockerSync duplicates files and uses rsync, has an rsync daemon to basically duplicate the files, and that's not cool. <laughs> like, it's, you, you, yeah, so um, it's really awesome. Thank you for, for sharing that. So, uh, so yeah, and then, um, so Docsol comes preloaded with a lot of tools. So you have Rush, Drupal Console, Composer, um, Code Sniffer, a lot of things just kind of baked right into it uh, with a default configuration. Um, it also supports, you know, Solar, Varnish, Memcache, a lot of the common tools that you're going to be using on Drupal site. You know, site to site, you're probably going to have some of these. Hopefully all of it, some, some probably. Um, and since they are containers, since these are images, you can extend that. You know, if it's an image that you want to include with that, include that with your default setup, you can do that. This is Docker, these are images, this is all open source, you can do what you wish there. Um, so when you install Docker, or Docker, Docsl, the, um, uh, the, what you're going to use in the most is the fin command. So fin, think uh, Docker is like the whale, uh, the dorsal fin guides the whale, dorsal, Docker, doxel, fin, yeah, so that's, that's where it was. Um, yeah, that's, uh, but yeah, fin is what you're going to be using the most. Uh, we've got custom commands you can add. This is really cool for setting up, um, you know, it's per project too. So if you, you would set this up, your configuration for every project that you have, you would do it once. You can include some custom commands. Custom commands are just shell scripts. No bash, you can add custom commands. Once you add it in the special location, it's gonna find it, it's going to enable it, and just like Drush, if you install a new module, now you've got a new option when you type in fin. It's pretty cool. Uh, I think the, the voodoo magic and the awesome stuff of this comes with uh, this DNS and port management. So if you're using Docker, and if you have been using it for a while, um, which actually I'm kind of curious, show of hands, who currently uses Docker some way or another? Nice, it seems to be getting more and more of each one. Um, so uh, for those of you who are not really familiar with using Docker on day to day, if you're using it, you're, you're going to be setting different ports for different images. So uh, just to give you an example, I work support uh, for the company I work for, and I work on maybe 20 to 30 different projects. Not in one day or one week always, but well, we've got a lot of projects, and I need to jump and be ready to jump into a project if something comes up. But each one has a different port. So the way I've gotten around this is just, you know, I've got like one URL, and it's like port 8000 is one site, 8001 is another site, 8002 is a different site. Um, you remember it after a while, but it's still something that you have to do. It's this extra step. This uh, DNS magic that they're doing abstracts a lot of that. You don't have to think about it. It's always, always the same port, and there's just an image in between that's kind of handling that, so you're connecting to one image that does DNS and routing for you, so that you, like, you don't have to think about it. You always learn. Um, and installing Doxer, Doxel is crazy easy. I mean, it's just literally copy and paste this command into it, and that's going to install Doxel. Uh, again, it does require VirtualBox by de default, uh, so it's going to install that initial uh, virtual machine. It's going to get things started. Um, Get things going for you, and uh, just kind of you know, be sure that your environment's ready to go and ready to start using the things. All right, so I wanted to give you guys a live demo of this. This is always a fun thing. Uh, demos are always go beautifully. So, so yeah, um, I've already done some work here. So I've already installed Docs. So I'm not going to go through that. And there's tutorials and documentation online. Uh, can everybody read that okay, or should I make that larger? So, all right, this is huge. Okay, so just to show you here, this is an empty directory, right? Uh, what we want to do is I want to clone a repository, and this repository I'm going to clone is kind of a demonstration repo for Doxel. So just get clone, if I can type, call it Doxel. Actually, let's put this, we'll call this Texas Doxel, sure, 2017 really creative with my naming scheme. So normal stuff, just create you cloning down a repo. And uh make sure again. Okay, good, I have good signal on there. So I shouldn't shouldn't take just a moment here. I should only take just a moment. Seemed to happen a lot faster when I was doing the demos and I was <laughs> testing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just like watching it all. 
Okay, great. Um, so yeah, uh, just to clear that up, there's the, fo or the folder that I just cloned into. I'm gonna go in here. And uh, just to kind of show you here what's in it, you know, we've got a config directory similar, I guess, to how Acquia was set up there, Doc. They'll initiate the doc root one level back, or I'm sorry, they'll initiate the repository one level back from the doc root. Um, some people will have good arguments for that, against that. I like to see both, I see that there's positives in both. Um, so in this case, we have uh, also hidden files too. So we've got this dot doc whole directory. And if we go into .docsl and just take a look, uh, a few files, the uh, commands directory. So this is the, those awesome custom commands I was talking about. You put them in that directory and then they're available to you. Uh, this docsl.env, that's our environment file. So let's go take a look at that. Look at that and um, basic stuff. So we have, uh, we have different stacks. So like different stacks, this would be, you would have a, your default stack, which in this case, we're doing your blade. Uh, but you have something, a stack for Acquia, a stack for Pantheon, uh, a stack for Black Mesh, a stack for different versions of EHP. The choices are endless. I and mean, you can go and create stacks for each one, however you want to create said stack. Um, we're just gonna use the default here. Um, the web images, so here, this is gonna be the actual image. So this is a Apache 2.2, MySQL, uh, and PHP 7. Um, Next things we have down here are going to be the configuration. So we've got uh, the virtual host. This is just going to be what we're actually naming that file. I don't want to access it via the browser. Uh, you can change this too. You can put whatever you want there. Actually, I'm going to do that, but I'm in, I'm in less at the moment. So let me just back out and do that. Well, upset the them people. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. So Texas, oh, let's call it Texas Camp Docs. Well, that's apt enough. Okay, so we just changed the host name of what we want to call this site. Um, and just to look at it again, there's not a whole lot more below that. Um, we've got our doc root. Uh, we actually have uh, you know settings for MySQL. Um, and then like if we wanted to turn xdebug on or off, you would do that from here. Um, so, in that. And, uh, and pretty much all we have to do at this point, because the only thing I've done this far is just change the, the, the host name, what I want, want, what I want the site to actually call. Uh, so from here, all I have to do is type fin. So fin init. So let's wonder. First, it's gonna to check to see if you have, okay, that's really fast. <laughs> it's going to check to see if we have settings at local. Uh, it's going to check to see if there are any images and uh, containers running under the same name first. If it is, it's going to remove them so it can recreate them without conflict. Uh, it's going to start our services. So this is going to be our um, our volumes. This is going to be our SSH uh, agents. Um, and then the actual images itself. So we have our database, our command line, and the web interface. In this case, this is going to be Apache. Uh, we're now setting permissions. So hopefully like permissions are done. Uh, if you're starting the daemon, or now it's handling the database stuff, right? So it's going to, um, you know, it has a, it's, it's using Drush uh, site install to install your site. Uh, so in this case, it's going to first dump all the database, you know, dump all the, all the tables from the database because, you know, it creates the database first, wants to be sure that's clean, so it removes it, then it imports everything. This process sometimes takes a few minutes. Uh, the last, like, I don't know, 12 times I've done this today, it's in like 30 seconds, so we'll see. Don't take too much longer here. And uh, yeah, so at this point, I mean, I just grabbed the repo. I just ran this one fin init command. I, I did change the, the host name, but I could have left it the same. Um, just wanted to show you that it's not, you know, it is true, it is real. What you're about to see, so. Um, should be on here any, any moment here. Ah, there we go. So, so what we have is, yeah, congratulations, you installed Drupal. It tells you, reset your admin password as a randomly generated password, uh, or set your admin username, randomly generated password, uh, some stats about how long it took to install, and basically it tells us our site's done, so let's check it out. So. I think that makes it faster. Hooray! 
So now it's done. So I mean, I just, I just ran like one command and I have my entire site installed. Now granted, this is just a poor Drupal 8 install, so it's nothing super impressive, but you can pull it in your database you want. I mean, you can have, you can have a script that then goes and pulls in your database from Pantheon, from Aquia, from whatever your production host is. So I mean, that's really your biggest difference. And you can use things like stage file proxy to uh, you know, load in remote file systems to make things a little bit easier for you. Uh, that's a module, by the way, if anyone's Okay, so, um, so yeah, basic Drupal site, and, uh, and now let's, let's let's interact with this. So, all right, so we want to take a look at this. Let's go into the doc root. I actually, put a too many debugs. All right, so now there are a few ways we can interact with the site. Uh, one, uh, so if you are familiar with, with Docker. Um, you could run like, a, like there's an exec command that you could run to kind of pass one-off commands to it. Uh, typically, people just exec bash, which what that does is very pretty much the same thing as S you know using SSH to connect to a machine. So, um, and, and Doxel does no, it's not any different. So it still has uh, fin. So fin. I'll just type fin real quick so we can kind of see a, a list of various commands. It's hard to read at this resolution though. Um, and these are things that we can look up later, but uh, again, this, this does, this presentation is about Drupal, but it also works with WordPress and works with pretty much any type of Linux based hosting platform that you're, you're into. Um, but, uh, but exec, so. So I'll do fin. Uh, there's the exec command, which is basically just run this command from this directory. So like if I wanted to do just an ls maybe, you do fin exec ls, and it'll do it inside that container using that, that shell. So that's, that's my basic ls. You can also do things like uh, drush. So you, mean you could do like drush status. Um, you don't have to do the exec. Fin knows is smart and knows Drupal, so you don't actually have to put the exec there. Uh, you can just put drush, it knows. Um, so you yeah, have drush stuff. Uh, or if you just want to drop in the shell like you would like any other um, uh, Docker image, you can just do, uh, I think it was a fin. Oh, yeah, it's fin exec bash. I think. Or no, it's fin bad. No, that's it. Yeah, so. So, yeah, now I'm in the shell. Now I'm, I'm actually, think of it like I just SSH or use SSH to connect to the terminal. You know, it's the same, same thing. You still be able to connect to that remote machine. Other cool things that you can do with this. Um, Okay, so now that we're actually in the machine, let's just do like a drush ULI, just so I can show you that it is the same site that we're working with here. That'd be a pretty good, a pretty easy way to tell. That's not what I want. There we go, so I'm logged into the site. All right, and uh, the next thing. Uh, so let's let's say we we want to go change the URL, for example. We want to change some environment settings on the uh, on our project here. So what we'll do? I'll just exit out of this. Uh, go back to here. Where am I at? So I'm gonna go back to one directory. I want to. Oops. Go in here. And do the. So let's say if we want to change our. Um, the versions will be really cool, but I'll just change this because it's a really easy example. So I'll just put, I'll remove the, the hyphen and just name this to 2017. Okay, so now that we've done that, you want to update your settings. It's very similar to Vagrant, fin up. And what you're going to notice is that two of these are already up to date because the command line and the database, nothing changed there. The only thing that changed was that web server so that one was recreated, or that image was recreated. So now, if we go, and I've probably already forgotten what I think it's here. Minus the okay. So, we go back here, Dang it. go back here. Twenty seventeen. Ta-da! You got your got your new new configuration. So, if you were changing your PHP version or MySQL or switching from Apache to Nginx, it would be just the same. You would just go to make the change, do the up, and it's done. So, uh, another cool thing that we can do uh, is, uh, so 
that, that tired old excuse, well, it's all my local, I gotta push it up, right? I guess they've run into that a lot, so they've actually added in a feature for that. Is uh, It's called share, it's really simple, right? So just fin share. Oh, I got that. It's, what? Shouldn't have run that here, right? Live, live demos, huh? <laughs> so, stop. Um, I guess just to kind of further prove the point here, I'll just go ahead and remove the entire, all the images, because it doesn't take too long to do that. And I'm not, I'm not gonna go re-download the repos, that's what took a long time last time, or took the longest last time. Um, so, yeah. So, fin, init, and more or less just re re repeat that same process we went through. Um, Sure, I missed a step along the way, but without having to debug in front of everybody, I'll just start over here. Um, this process will be long. I guess we can use this as a time while we're waiting for this. Does anybody have any questions at the moment? Or awesome. uh, I guess I saw your hand first. Then no. It's been a couple months since I used this, but wasn't there like a config, a thing config up or something like that that took the folder name and changed the URL to the folder name? Yeah, so um, I haven't used that one so much. Um, I've there are a lot of commands in there. Um, I haven't dug through all of them yet. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's a there's a bunch of update commands within uh, within Finmesh to to do that thing. Um, but it also changed on too. It's a very actively developed yeah. project. So if you go to uh, GitHub, I mean, it's there's commits to this thing all the time, which is a really good sign. Uh, that's going to have a nice activity. Um, you sir? Uh, I just wanted to um, see if you could maybe illustrate um, the use case in which. Um, or example, uh, B hat integration. Gotcha. Um, I'll have that set up right now, so it would take a while. But no, it's it's something that you would um, probably the, the best way to go about or go about doing that would be to find an image on Backer Hub, okay. something that is supported. Uh, you could bake that into you know, bake that into your setup. You know, just do that file that we're uh, looking. Well, you would just add another image to that, or you can create a new stack. So if you wanted to have like a stack specifically for uh, BHAT testing, um, you could do that. You can just create a stack that has BHAT um, included and you could either use that as your default or go and make your, when you're setting up the file for your, your environment file for your project, uh, you can set that project to use you know, something with BHAT or, or with BHAT or something like that. Um, and then from that, from there, uh, it would just be just like you know, BHAT and timeouts in the same, same format, same use cases. And so. Um, so uh, one thing I'm really curious about is that uh, you said that this helps with switch times and yes. like that. Yeah. Um, do you know how much or did you? Yeah, there's not zero. I mean, you can keep them running. You can have them all running. Uh, granted, this is going to be like a hardware thing, so if you have enough memory on your system, sure. Um, but you know, if you actually have a hardware in there, you can have multiple images running. Uh, so it would just be a matter of going to the other URL, going to the other directory in your machine. I mean, it wouldn't be. Uh, you know, there's no need really to spin one down and spin one up because when the new resources are not being used or when the image is not being used, it's not consuming. I mean, you're still using some IO resources, but it's not. It's not like virtual machine where if I've locked in, uh, you know, two gigs of RAM for this one virtual machine, now I my machine only had eight gigs to start with. Now I've got six. No matter if I'm using the machine or not, if it's running, it's using it. Uh, Docker is not quite like that. It's going to have better resource management. What sorts of an impact did it have on your support team? <laughs> I'm still in the process of, of convincing all my support team to get on top on board. Um, so we have a we have a few different. Um, we're in the process of standardizing. It's just trying to get what those standards are, and we're like, in the process of discussing that. And this is one of my ways to like, like this is the future. Let's do this. Let's do this only. I want to try to strong arm it, but we've got some really smart people that have really good cases and a lot of stuff put in behind that too. So it's a little bit more of a tedious conversation, but. Um, but no, as far as me, it's uh, it's amazing. So yes, sir. So for the use case of you're, you're naming a site mm -hmm. and you're working in your local file system there to do whatever SAS you're working on, yeah. but you need to run the compiler or the you know, either npm or grunt or call. Are you exec 
bashing into the environment to run that, or are you running that locally, or you can do. I mean, you can do either one. You can do either one. So, well, kind of locally, not as much. You would install it with your image, or you would have something with your image. Uh, if you can have access to the files, so something like Compass, you know, like where you're right. compiling your code that way, um, you can run that locally because it's just going to look for your, you know, SCSS sure. files and then generate it that way. Uh, so, yes and no, you can do it locally. Sometimes, if you actually need to, like, uh, like Runt, for example, you know, it might be a little bit more. You would want to run that on the machine, so you could do something like exec into it, um, or you could just straight exec that. Uh, you could create a custom command for it, just to where it's like thin runs, custom command. Um, you can do that, and it makes you know it kind of just puts it inside the, the doc soul space. Um, yeah. So. So the file changes go between your local and. Right. It's mounted. So basically, think of it like a like a network mount almost. Um, you know, just the files that change here, they are the same files. It's just it's just the same directories are mounted. So you probably could run them locally then, right? What's that? You could run the commands locally since they. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, to some degree. I mean, it depends on what the commands are and what it is that it's doing. Um, but yeah, in most cases, yeah. So you'd be able to do that. Is there a pseudo command? Pseudo command. So when you're running docs, typically with Docker, you're going to be running as root. Okay. I mean, that's when you're in the container, you're running as root. Um, Docsl, and I'll just show you here. So I just dropped into it. Yeah, so when I drop into the uh, show here, this one is not written. Really, you still have full access to machines. You can create custom users just as you would on any other machine. Uh, so in this case, they've just done that for us and created a Docker user. I think this, this part just looks cleaner than the normal default. It's typically, it would be like root at and then a hash ID, and that's like the that's like the current revision of that image that you're on. So if you go and install a bunch of uh, other packages to your image, like like Drush or you know, Drupal console or something like that, uh, then you would commit whatever that hash ID is to, to make this the new version. Uh, the point of Docsl is to simplify a lot of that and abstract a lot of it. Uh, so you're going to run into things like usernames and no hash, no hash IDs. Um, for good reason. Okay. So let me just exit out of this. Do my fin share again because that is awesome. <laughs> Again, this like works so beautifully, like the two hundred times I did this until the first time I've seen this error in like a long time. Yeah, live demos. It's all awesome. All right, it knows I'm doing a live demo. Um, why isn't it doing? I'm like, what's that? It's shy. Yeah, it's in all cases or. In most cases, the way this works is that once you run this command, it creates a publicly accessible URL. You don't have to go and set up port mapping. You don't have to do anything in your router. It just does it. Uh, I was demoing this yesterday in the airport. On the airport Wi-Fi, I was able to create a publicly accessible URL from the airport Wi-Fi without having to touch any type of hardware, which I wouldn't be able to do anyway. But I mean, like the, it just makes that part really easy. It distracts a lot of it, and typically, as fast as it tells me I'm, I'm messed up right here, is about how long it takes to, <laughs> to actually get that up. So it's kind of uh, disappointing that it's sometimes let me see. So fin share. Let's try one more time. Probably not though. Nah, nah. It's a live demo. That's what did it. You were mentioning making changes within the container, but if you did that, you remove the container, then they're gone unless you create another image. Right. right, so um, this is not necessarily a Docsl thing, but more of a Docker thing, like just the kind of baseline Docker. Uh, if you can make changes to the image, which you absolutely can, um, there'll be a, uh, a hash ID. I've uninstalled all the other Docker stuff, so <laughs> I would love to show you this, but I just can't at the moment on, my, on this particular laptop. Um, but yeah, so there's a, there's a hash ID. It looks just like a, a, a GitHub or a Git um, commit hash. Uh, so that hash ID is like that unique version of this, this container. So whenever you install that container, you connect into it, start installing a bunch of things, it's still gonna have that unique ID. So then just like Git, you commit those changes to that image. You can push it up to Docker Hub just like you do GitHub. Um, yeah, and then that's how you would add your own custom changes to your own custom image and then push it up on Docker Hub and then share it with other people. So it needs to go up to Docker Hub, though? It doesn't have to. I mean, you can just create a Docker file and run everything locally. Docker Hub just makes it a little bit more convenient. You're putting it out there. Uh, you're not going to have the Docker file, or like say if, uh, if I upload, if I take my Docker file, upload it to Docker Hub, you want to go get my image? You absolutely can do that. Uh, it's going to be a little more difficult for you to get the Docker file, though. Um, so it's, 
I could also provide you with a Docker file, and then you can run like a Docker build and build from that file, um, which is the common way. If you're writing your own files, you would do that first. You build uh, that builds the image from the Docker file, uh, and then that image is what you then push up to Docker. Uh, you said yes, at the sir. beginning that the um, the uh, the Drupal uh, image on uh, Docker Hub without more for a demo or more for demo, yes, sir. not for development. Is the Doxel uh, image more of a good starting point for development? It's not a bad. One. I mean, it's more of a demonstration for Dox Doxel's capabilities. But, uh, but yeah, no, I mean, it would be. Free kind of like build your own. You don't have to. I mean, you could start with that. Yeah. I mean, it's a perfectly. It's a, there's no, no 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 reason why you wouldn't want to. Okay. I mean, it's a. It has a lot of stuff built in for you. A lot of the Doxel. Where else uh, would you go to find something to start with? Um, well, do, just doxel.io, I would probably use that as a base. There's a really great resource of documentation on, their, on this website. Uh, so you can use that to build your own, build your own images. Uh, the images itself, so... Why do I keep going always the wrong way? go back to that Docker file, that, or that Docker Compose file. <coughs> I wonder if I can make this a little bit larger. No, I can't. But yeah, so these are, all of these are images here. Really hard to read, I apologize for that. But, um, so like this image here is like would be Drupal Nginx 1.10. That's on Docker. Each one of these are on Docker Hub. So in this case, this is, this is the Docker for Drupal, the example from Docker for Drupal. So a lot of these are going to be in the same place as this would be uh, user. Um, so you've got one for MariaDB, you've got one for uh, PHP 7, you've got one for um, Nginx, uh, and all of these are available on Docker Hub. So I mean, if you go to Docker Hub and you find a different version, uh, maybe a um, maybe you have an older site. Maybe you, you don't want the bleeding edge, and you can't want to, but you're not quite there yet. Maybe um, so. I mean, like you might need to go back to PHP five or or maybe five three or something. I don't know why, but you would you have that option. Um, images for older ones might be a little bit hard, more difficult to find. Um, so that's where your Docker files come into play because you have um, Debian, for example, uh, the operating system. Um, they have version I think eight and seven. Well, version, there's just a Debian image, which is, I think, like 8.5. It's the latest version of Debian. And um, they have other Docker files for the previous version that you just have to go build yourself if you want to use them. Uh, so it's hosted in one place, but once you get it, you can download it. And you can find Docker files, Docker Compose files. You can find those all over the internet. I mean, you'll find them on uh, Docker Hub. It's probably the best place to start. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you'll find them on GitHub. You'll find them in a lot of different places. And uh, it doesn't require you to actually put the image to Docker Hub. So I mean, if you're trying to work on something internally or you have like, an internal project that you might not necessarily want to share that image to Docker Hub, you can use Docker files, Docker Compose files. Uh, that can just be included with your repository, which would then be a private repo. And, yeah. uh, I don't know if we have time, but I was hoping we could compare and contrast some of the options available on Docker. Uh, I've, I think I've heard of like four different options right now. Uh, you know, like the straight Docker files, mm -hmm. the Docker Compose, which you mentioned. Uh, looks like Doxel is a new one I just learned about today. Uh, and then the last one uh, that I haven't heard mentioned yet is like Calbox. Yeah, so actually Calbox was in my presentation. I removed it just because it's... Last time I did this presentation, I was really excited to talk about Docker. I got halfway through the presentation, I was out of time. And then it was just a really weird presentation. <laughs> so I pulled out a lot of stuff. Uh, Calibox is great though, it's really cool if you're just looking for a, um, if you have a site that's on Pantheon and that's the only place you have, maybe a couple of single sites and are all on Pantheon, Calibox is great. The, the interface for it is fantastic, it is built on Docker. Uh, I think there's an option for like 100 bucks a year, I think like 99 bucks a year for the developer release and it allows you to, it gives you the options, it makes available options to better support using your own images. Uh, Calibox. Uh, one really cool thing about Calibox that I've that I've seen is that they have images for solar and a lot of other things that are kind of difficult to find, like the Pantheon version of solar. I need this locally, and it's hard to find that. I mean, you can build it, and you can kind of get it close, but you know, it's still that little bit, little percent of uncertainty that it's not exactly where it needs to be. And uh, 
And then Colorbox does a really good job for doing that. They actually have a, um, an image for that. I mean, it's literally a few clicks. Uh, it syncs up with the Pantheon API with Terminus and pulls all down. It's, it's pretty awesome. Uh, but Doxel is way more powerful. Uh, so, I mean, it's... Um, and I would say it's more supported too. I mean, Calbox is there. Calman is the guys who support that. They do a great job of it. But Doxel, they have a lot more people on the on the project. So I mean, a lot of people working on it. And uh, I think it's just a little bit more ambitious as far as what it's trying to do. Because um, those command, I, go, I could spend all day going through the command list and just I, I'd probably find new things that I haven't seen yet. And then, then I get sucked into it trying to, trying to play with it. So. But yeah, there's um, Calbox is a good one. Um, I've heard some. So, Calbox, I'd say, is kind of like the out of the box type setup. You know, you click yeah. a button, it works. Uh, I think there's a couple bugs that I've had to get around. Um, you know, Google can kind of help you out with that. Oh, yeah. But it looks like you kind of compared uh, Docker Compose versus Doxel, and then you picked Doxel out of the two. Can you explain why? Yeah, yeah. So, mostly just the port abstraction. So, not having to worry about ports, not having to worry about like what port that I put that to. Um, having in the big thing, PHP Storm. I mean, a lot of people I'm sure use PHP Storm. It has great, you know, the, the XD bug is a fantastic IDE for working with Drupal sites. Um, configuration though, trying to get everything set up and having a lot of projects again I'm coming from support. So like working on dozens of sites at a time. You know, having to go set up different configurations for each single one. It's, it's a pain. I mean, it's a pain. Yep. So I mean, like it's just. Uh, not having to worry about all that stuff, Doxel just kind of makes that easy, just to where I have like a base configuration, I don't have to think about it. Um, and I can have people on my team run this one command, set up your environment, done. Like, you know, it's not, I don't have to then, then try to estimate for how long is this local going to take to set up. And now this person's pulled another project, now I need another developer, now I'm billing more, <laughs> or I'm doing more, I'm spending more time doing local environments. So um, that one command just to kind of do everything is beautiful. Um, and not that you couldn't, you absolutely could do it with, with Docker Compose. It's just going to be a little bit more work that you have to do on your end. Uh, going with the route of Doxel, that work's already been done and it's supported. So I mean, it's uh, you know kind of following that same Drupal contrib uh, kind of mentality. Um, and you know, it's, I mean, it also comes out of the box, supports other CMSs too. So I mean, there's a lot of flexibility with it. Um, and again, there's just more and more stuff, great documentation. Um, that's great. Do Doxel.io. The, the I'm uh, also in support. How hard is it to set up Doxel on an existing site? <laughs> oh, an existing site? Yeah. Uh, so if you've never used Docker before, really easy. It's just that one command, you copy and paste and you're done. Um, I mean, it's, it, it sets up VirtualBox for you. It sets up all the things you need to where at that point you just then have to go set up the, the environment file, the actual Doxel file. Uh, documentation on that's fairly easy. I would recommend going to uh, their Drupal 8 or 7 project, depending on what your project is, and projects are in support. Um, and just kind of build out, look at, look, use that as an example and build out from there. Okay. Any more questions? Should have a slide for questions. Um, There's a maze guy <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So I guess to, to review, yeah, I mean, Docker, um, it's really fast, it's efficient, it's shareable. Uh, it's, really, it's a great community. It's a fast-growing community. They have, they have Docker cons. I haven't been yet, but next year, I think I'll try to make it there. Um, uh, it's great for development. So I mean, it's great for, for it's still kind of on the, the bleeding edge as far as production hosting, but there's some really cool things. That's like Docker Swarm and some of the awesome stuff that you can do there. Uh, again, it's been weeks talking about that. I mean, so they're, really dense subject. Um, and then with Doxel, it's really easy to use. Uh, it further increases that shareability. Uh, it's customizable. Uh, and overall, it just reduces your, your time it takes to, to ramp up to a project, to switch to a project. Uh, all around, it's awesome. So, uh, again, questions? Do we have any questions? Uh, if, if you think of a question after the fact, uh, Canopy, we are over. We have a booth in the main hall. We're going to be there today and tomorrow. Uh, feel free to stop by and hit us up. Um, that is my name, just Will Jackson's my name on, on Docker Hub if you want to check out my images. If you want to hit me up on Twitter, feel free to, WillJackson00. And yeah, I'd like to thank you guys. I'd like to thank Canopy for sponsoring the trip and uh, thank everybody who's helping put on uh, Drupal Camp Texas. Uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of hard work goes in these events and I just want to thank everybody for that, putting that on. So, so thank you. Thank you.